Hello everyone and welcome to another video. You guys have been asking for absolutely ages for me to film an updated bookshelf tour. I think maybe like two years ago I filmed an old bookshelf tour using just my like white bookshelf that's sitting over next to my computer. It was before we bought this beautiful huge bookcase from Ikea. It's this particular bookcase. I love it to absolute pieces. I love the fact that it's got like this wood look and the wood contrasts with like the white paint. I don't know how to describe furniture. So we have this guy and then we also still have the white bookcase. And then I think in that last video I also had like a third bookcase situation which was basically like the overflow books that were sitting in my wardrobe. I no longer have that there because that section of my wardrobe is now filled with camera equipment. We're just looking at different solutions for storage. But maybe like three months ago I went on a big organization thing and now I've got a whole bunch of books in storage and so we are left with just this bookcase and the white bookcase which is what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. Bookcase A, bookcase B and then very very quickly because you guys keep asking for it but I don't think enough people are interested in it for me to make a dedicated video. I'm going to very quickly talk about board games because I get so many questions about all of these board games. We've got this whole section here, this section under the coffee table, there's a section over there. So I'm just gonna shoehorn in a little board game collection tour at the end of this video. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into it. This is gonna be a very rambly, cozy video. So grab your tea or whatever equivalent cozy beverage and we can get started with bookcase A. At this very awkward angle my camera's falling oh my god this tripod is so broken let me start with giving you guys a quick overview of the entire bookcase moving up okay you can just see my eyebrows now excellent up here at the very very top we have some lego this the lego stuff belongs to my partner tyler i actually have a lego set which i'm yet to build which i think is going to go up here very soon tokyo and then we also have a star destroyer from the mandalorian this bookcase here belongs entirely to tyler so i'm not going to cover that and then we also have this shelf here which for the longest time was literally just the doom hammer and it annoyed the absolute bejesus out of me because it was just empty aside from this guy and i was like tyler i don't care what you put on your shelf but you need to put something on there so that there's some sort of harmony and it's not just empty space plus a doom hammer he ended up actually filling it with stuff eventually, so we're good. We have some other knickknacks and eclectic things here. These three bookshelves are mine, so let's go more in-depthly into those. You can just see mess. Why is there always so much mess? That is a sock on the floor. My god! I don't know how other people do it. How do other people film in their homes and always have their houses looking just perfect and so neat? I don't really understand it. So, as an overview, this particular shelf here is mostly fantasy books. The reason why I have this on a higher shelf is because when I'm filming, generally this is the shelf you guys see because of where the camera sits. And I wanted this shelf to be quite colourful, so I used to have all of the contemporary books up here, but the contemporary books are the pretty colourful ones, so I wanted them to be at a better place for when I film so that you guys get to see them more often. Still mostly speculative here, like the, all of this here is mostly speculative, but we're moving more into the contemporary area. We have some poetry here, classics here, we have more classics here, and then all of these are my contemporary and translation books. So let's jump in and I can give you guys some more depth. <laughs> okay, so starting from right to left because why would we have normal structure we have in the corner hiding here um let me move persephone out the way quickly in the corner here we have hiding forest of a thousand lanterns by julie c dow i do really want to read this one but it just hasn't made its way on to my most recent list i got given this by a friend a deadly education by naomi novik v.e schwab's the invisible life of addie larue which we read for our book club the atlas six by olivia blake which i haven't gotten to yet but which i recently. Piranesi by Susanna Clarke and then over here after this gap we have Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. We have a little statue of Persephone which was given to me by my brother-in-law for Christmas. In case you guys didn't know I really really love Greek mythology and mythology in general and I love Persephone so Persephone is standing just here. The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch. I picked this book up for free because Dimmicks when they were shutting down their pop-up store they were 
giving away damaged books for free. So this book has a tiny, tiny bit of damage, but most significantly, it is missing the back cover. You can't tell when it's sitting on the bookshelf, so I don't mind. Um, it's gonna be a little bit annoying to read it without a back cover, but otherwise I don't really mind. Um, this has been on my TBR for a while, so I'm excited to read it. Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Magician by Raymond E. Feist. I have not read this one yet. It was given to me by my housemate six or seven years ago. Wise Man's Fear and The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I've read this one, not this one. I want to read this one soon. Uh, Daughter of Spoken Bone by Lainey Taylor. This one is called Dangerous Women. It's like a short story compilation of like women-centric fantasy stories. I think I haven't read very much of it yet. Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Priory of the Orange Tree. This book is so good. Bloody brilliant world building, just excellent characters. I love it very much. Philip Pullman, His Dark Materials, same. I love this book. Uh, An Atlas of Tolkien, The Hobbit, and then of course, my massive, enormous copy of The Lord of the Rings. Um, and then this little guy, which I won at a like arcade thingy. <laughs> we have in the corner, hiding. I need a better spot for this because this is the Song of Achilles and it's the really beautiful anniversary edition that I bought. Look how pretty this book is. It's honestly absolutely stunning. Next we have two books by TJ Klune, so Under the Whispering Door and also The House in the Cerulean Sea. I loved The House in the Cerulean Sea was a bit underwhelmed by Under the Whispering Door. This one is Lud in the Mist by Hope Miralees. I have been wanting to read this book for ages. I bought it maybe six months ago. It's a pre-Tolkienian fantasy. This book was written in the 1920s and I really, really want to read it very soon. And then I have my Neil Gaiman section. So we have Graveyard Book, Ocean at the End of the Lane, and also American Gods. My little Gothic section, pretty much. Aside from obviously some of the classics over here, we have Crystal Sutherland's House of Hollow, which which is a YA novel, The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millward Hargrave, and then all of my Angela Carter books. So we've got Fireworks and Magic Toy Shop, which is my favorite book by Angela Carter, The Infernal Desire Machines of Dr. Hoffman, my least favorite Angela Carter, Bloody Chamber, which is a compilation of retold fairy tales, and then Angela Carter's Book of Fairy Tales, which is another fairy tale compilation, and then the Virago Book of Witches by Sharuk Hussein. Moving along to some contemporary books, we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I just just read All the Light We Cannot See, Secret History, some poetry, so there's Time as a Mother by Ocean Vuong, T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland and Other Poems, The Bell Jar, Mrs. Dalloway, A Room of One's Own, Orlando, To the Lighthouse, I love Virginia Woolf, I think she's brilliant. Some more classics here, so we've got Dante's Inferno, Dracula, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, The Crucible, As They Lie Dying, A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen, this is my favorite play, The Great Gatsby, Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka, and for some reason, in the corner, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. And then a little Gudetama, which I also won in an arcade, so all of my arcade winnings end up going here. Moving along to this shelf, which is arguably the prettiest shelf that I have. I've tried to loosely make a rainbow shelf here, and so they're not really in a specific order, but we have Killing Commendatore in the corner here. Um, this one is The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle. Then we have Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, which is my favorite book I read in 2020, I think. I loved that book. I thought it was so good. How Do You Live by Genzaburo Yoshino, which is the book that's going to be the next Studio Ghibli film. Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukagawa. Uh, the Forest of Wool and Steel by Natsu Miyashita. Convenient Store Woman by Sai Ayaka Murata, another Huki Murakami. They're a bit separated to help with the color coding, but now I realize that this is pink and this is pink, so maybe they should go together. I don't know. Huki Murakami's Norwegian Wood, Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tsujimura, Kazuo Ishiguro's Clara and the Sun, The Bastard of Istanbul by Elif Shafik, There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job by Kikuko Tsumura, 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which I really, really enjoyed reading. There's a reading vlog of me reading that one. Stationary Shop of Tehran by Marjan Kamali. This is a really good historical novel. Kazuo Ishiguro's Never Let Me Go, which just devastated me. It's so sad. Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kawakami. Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. I've never actually read this book, despite having owned it for like, I don't know, many, many years. When the Night Comes by Favel Parrot. And then some more classics over here. So we've got 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Frankenstein, my beloved, 
beloved Frankenstein. God, I love this book so much. Uh, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, a very cool collection of the works of Oscar Wilde, and then a compilation of Shakespeare's plays. And that is the whole thing. That is the first bookcase done. I'm doing my best to try and not make this video painfully, painfully long for you guys. So I am really am trying to get through all these books quite quickly. So I'm speaking very quickly and I'm kind of already out of breath. <laughs> Moving on to bookcase number two, which is actually in this room. This is all the same room. It's just a little study nook that we have, um, but you can see the edge of the bookcase right here. Okay, let's go over there. Hello and welcome to this little nook where we have our old bookcase. And by old bookcase, I mean like I still use this bookcase, obviously. I'm also speaking just a little bit more quietly because when I sit here, if I speak loudly enough, all of my neighbors can hear me because of the door and the hallway. And so that's why my voice might have changed just a little bit. We have this white bookcase. My desk is sitting just here. So when I'm vlogging from my desk, this is like the angle you guys generally see. You get it, you've seen my apartment. Up here, up the very top, we have a whole bunch of Studio Ghibli art books. I love these art books and I wish I could put them in a more accessible place, but this is only really the place we have for them. We have a whole bunch of Studio Ghibli figures up here. These we bought in Akihabara. There's this really cool little shop where I could find all of these like gacha Studio Ghibli figures like secondhand. We have some Japanese study books here, a little tanuki, um, and then some pop vinyls and a fake plant from Ikea. Moving down a little bit, we have Tyler's video games. So we're going to be skipping this. Just, just you can have a look if you want, but it, we'll just breeze on past it. And then we have a whole bunch of mess. So you can see all of, all of this stuff here, which is just me trying to be organized and then getting horribly distracted halfway through. Like I got all of these tubs and I was like, I'm gonna make everything super organized. And then that was about three weeks ago. So we have on this side, mostly Harry Potter and middle grade. We've got a little pop vinyl of Harry, but he doesn't have a wand anymore. His glasses have broken off. Every time I walk past, I'm clumsy and I bump it and then he falls off and then he gets a little bit more broken. I wonder if this is an interesting little metaphor for how people feel about Harry Potter. Anyway, moving on. We have middle grade books here, a Christmas themed movie Moogle from Final Fantasy XIV, which just sits out all the time. Fairy tale books and then reference and non-fiction. I probably don't need to give any real depth here. Harry Potter books. Over here we have this beautiful copy of Peter Pan that Tyler got me. Anne of Green Gables, which I also love. Alice in Wonderland. This book here, which I got given as a gift from my last workplace, which is called The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. Julia and the Shark by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. I love this book. I think it's so beautiful. Paddington, Here and Now, Jill Murphy's The Worst Witch, a couple of Diana Wynne Jones, well, three Diana Wynne Jones books, and behind all of these little office figures, a girl who circumnavigated fairyland in a ship of her own making more Japanese books. We've got a bunch of books in Japanese, which I won't go into too much depth with. We got them for learning resources. This one here is Haunted Japan, which is a compilation of stories about yokai and spirits, Japanese stories for language learners. So this one is like stories in Japanese, and then they also have English as well. Well, these two little books right here are actually the first Harry Potter book in Japanese, which I managed to pick up secondhand from Book Off. They were, well, this one is 337 yen for the first half of the first book. And then we've got the second half of the first book here. This one is a book in Japanese on minimalism. This is a poetry compilation, which probably should be with the other poetry compilations. Turning Point and Starting Point, which are compilations of Hayao Miyazaki's nonfiction works and articles and speeches, and then a biography or rather an analysis of Hayao Miyazaki's films. I love Ghibli, I love Miyazaki, and so this is like the Miyazaki section. Novelization of the script of Your Name. Dinah Wynne Jones, The Tough Guide to Fantasyland. The Elements of Style, which is just a book on grammar. Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. Haruki Murakami's What I Talk About When I Talk About Running. Steering the Craft by Ursula K. Le Guin. Here we're sort of moving on to like reference books and books about writing. The Making of a Poem, the Anthology of Classical myth, which is an excellent, excellent book on Greek mythology. Cambridge Companion to Shakespeare, The Taming of the Shrew, this is a companion to it. I think my major essay in year 12 was on The Taming of the Shrew. The Literary Theory Handbook, which is excellent if you want to learn more about literary movements. The Oxford Illustrated History of Witchcraft and Magic, another absolutely excellent reference book. Cambridge Companion to Fantasy Literature, also a beloved book. Literary Wonderlands, this is more of just a pretty coffee table book, but it's very, very 
very beautiful, so I love this book a lot. The Wand in the Word, this book is just a compilation of interviews with fantasy authors. I picked this up secondhand, and then I've also got my fairy tale books here. So we've got Grimm's Fairy Tales, Fairy Tales from Around the World, and Hans Christian Andersen. We have some more of Tyler's books, and technically this is my figure of Bartholomew, because when he popped up in One Piece, I thought his character was really, really funny. Like, I hated him to begin with. I thought he was super duper duper annoying, but then his characterization developed and now I just, I, I have this f***ing love for Bartholomew because I think he's hilarious and so, so ridiculous. But anyway, so more of Tyler's stuff on this side and then some more of my books and manga and stuff. We've got a Edgar Allan Poe compilation, we have some of my manga here, a book on haiku and some more classics that should be on my classics shelf but are not on my classics shelf because I just haven't been bothered to pull them out. Um, and then some illustration books as well. And that is mostly it for the bookshelf tour and my book collection. There's a little section I have sort of shoved in the corner here of my graphic novels and picture books and stuff. Should I, you know, now I should show you that as well. <laughs> okay, so this is not as an ideal of a setup. This is our record area, which is sitting next to our TV, our small but growing record collection, my little collection of graphic novels and picture books, The Sandman Overture by Neil Gaiman, Oh, The Places You'll Go, Let Me Snick it's the dark. Last Kappa of Old Japan, which is another Japanese learning one. It's a more simple story, but it's got passages in Japanese and in English. Onibi, Diary of a Yokai Ghost Hunter. It's a very, very cool graphic novel set in like Inaka Japan, so like rural Japan. That is now absolutely everything. I am now going to present to you guys the world's quickest board game tour. So let me quickly, quickly zoom through all of our board games. That's not even a board game. That is a visual guide to World of Warcraft. Warcraft. Okay, ignoring him. Legacy of Dragon Halt, Small World of Warcraft, Suburbia, Clank, Gloomhaven, Through the Ages, Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is a beautiful addition. Baby, Jenga. This one, which has some interesting packaging because it looks like a VHS tape, and then code names as well. My favorite board game that we own is this one. It's called Clank. Essentially, your goal is to get into this dungeon and like quickly grab all of this treasure and collect all of these points as quickly as possible and then get out. This particular dungeon has a sleeping dragon in it, and every time you make a clank or you like you, you know, trip over or something, you make a loud noise there's a chance you could wake up the dragon and so in this game there's this really fun mechanic where you have this little bag full of tokens and the more clanks you get you put more of your tokens into the bag and then when eventually the dragon erupts you shake the bag and then you have to pull out the tokens of the people who are going to get damaged from the dragon and so as you play the game as you go deeper and deeper into the dungeon and collect more treasure and get more points there's more and more of a chance that the dragon's going to like attack you and so I find that mechanic of having the bag and the tokens is really fun. Moving on to our board games over here. This first one is called Root, which has really beautiful artwork to it, but the game is really quite complex. Sorcerer, this one. This is a really good little game, which has these little insect pieces. Coup, which is a really good card game. I quite like Coup and also Citadels as well. Aside from Clank, I think maybe Citadels is probably my favorite. So this is the one we tend to bring if we're going to someone's house. The Crew, D&D &D light game. I like D&D, &D, but you sort of follow along and it helps guide you with a little book. Animal Crossing Monopoly. We have Tokaido, which is a beautiful game, which I got for my birthday a long time ago. We've got Munchkin, which is a classic. And then moving along, to the very final section I'll show you. Harry Potter code names. This is a one piece jigsaw puzzle. Five minute dungeon. This is a good one. Regular dungeon. This one. First Martian and then bang. This is uh, Dungeon Mayhem. This is another like D&D &D branded one but this game is really good as well. It's another good quick little card game. Okay so there's everything all done. I think I've shown you absolutely everything I wanted to show you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so so very much for watching and also an enormous thank you to everyone over on Patreon for supporting my channel. Over there we have a lot of lovely bonus content. We also have our Wyvern tier which is a special video requests tier. So the most recent video I uploaded to the Wyvern tier was this 29 minute deep dive into organization for self-employed people, how I do all of my spreadsheets, my reading spreadsheet, my finances spreadsheet, just basically everything I do as a self-employed person to stay organized. And on top of that we also have our book club, a private discord server, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So if you'd like to check out Patreon. There is a link in the description down below. Take care everyone and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.